Hello you guys, my name is Benji, and it's been a while since we did a sit down talking video, but I thought it would be a fun idea to highlight and look at some house plants that I often see used in spaces designed by interior designers or just in homes of people that have pretty good interior style. So I'd like to preface this by just saying that I am not part of the industry, so these are just my observations and what I've seen online, on my feeds. I've noticed a common theme over the past few years with plants in spaces that are designed by interior designers. They're often structural, unique, aged, and skinny. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Often they're not very bushy and they're more tree-like and there's a lot of emphasis on trees and form. Stylists and decorators and stuff don't really seem to like a lot of potted plants. And I think it's because it detracts away from like the furniture and maybe the style that they're going for. Usually there's like one or two plants in a room, usually like a tree and then one smaller plant, but they do also utilize a lot of flower arrangements and foliage arrangements. So let's just start off with the Dracaena. So this is a plant that I've talked about before on my channel. There are two Dracaenas that I see are the most popularly used. There's the Dracaena marginata and then there's the Dracaena reflexa. So I have a really large Dracaena reflexa in my living room. It looks amazing, I'm looking at it right now. Once it gets older, it can have a really cool shape and growth pattern and it works really well as a statement plant. The Dracaena marginata though, it kind of feels like the it plant right now. Um, there are just a lot of these everywhere in LA. Like I see them in coffee shops, I see them in people's homes on like Pinterest and Instagram, TikTok. As it ages, it takes on its own shape. So no Dracaena marginata looks the same. So there's this company that is called Plants and Spaces. They just opened up a shop in Los Angeles, like a physical storefront. They use the Dracaena marginata a lot and also other forms of Dracaena. What's really cool about them is they've done a few installations for celebrities. For example, Emma Chamberlain, she had her AD home tour and in her video, there are two Dracaenas and Plants and Spaces installed the Dracaenas for her. So I said something about like skinny plants earlier and the Dracaena marginata definitely fits this. I think the Plants and Spaces aesthetic, they have a lot of like really skinny, elongated plants. Okay, I don't, hmm, I don't wanna say emaciated because that sounds like negative, but a lot of their plants just look really skinny and like they're reaching for light, which I think kind of gives it a cool look because you can really see the shape and the form of the plant and they almost look like little living sculptures. Let's take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video, Lark. So I recently moved into a pretty old home. It's about a hundred years old and I honestly have no idea what's going on with the pipes or the water quality. Throughout college and the rest of my adult life, I've been using a water pitcher to filter my tap water. But one of the gripes that I have with the water pitchers is that they get dirty inside over time and it can be really inconvenient to have to clean it consistently. Something I learned recently is that by filtering the chlorine from the water, the filters themselves become breeding grounds for bacteria. And this is where the Lark pitcher comes in. The Lark pitcher uses a two step process to improve water quality. The first step is through filtration, which filters out contaminants like mercury, copper, and lead. Then once the water enters the basin, the Lark pitcher turns on its UV light, which inhibits the growth of bacteria. The rechargeable battery lasts for about a month, so you won't have to take it out and charge it too often. My favorite thing about the pitcher is the flap on top. It makes it really convenient and easy to refill the pitcher with water, and convenience is pretty important to me to ensure that I continue to use a product. You can check out Lark in the description, and once again, thank you to them for sponsoring this video. If you were around in like 2016 through 2018, the fiddly fig was everywhere. It was so popular, and it's not as popular now, but I do still see it used. Also, I did say in a previous video that I didn't really like fiddly figs, but I don't know if I emphasize this enough in the video. It's just a certain shape of fiddly fig that I'm not really too fond of. There's the bush form, column form, and the tree form. The column form is one single trunk, and then there are leaves from the base going all the way to the top, and I think it just looks kind of odd, but I do really like the tree form, which is a trunk and then it has the branches coming out. I found these examples to kind of show what I mean. So these two photos were posted by Architectural Digest, and in this photo, you know, the room is beautiful, but I love how the fiddly figs look. They take up a lot of vertical space because the ceilings are like super tall. When I saw this photo, I just thought that the trees were so beautiful. And then in this next photo, you know, obviously the space is amazing, but imagine if those column fiddly figs were tree form fiddly figs instead. I just think it would complement the space really well because it also has 
super tall ceilings. I found this photo when I was looking for plants to feature in this video and I thought it kind of just brought up an interesting point. A lot of times in these photos that feature these really stunning and beautiful places, they are staged. This fiddly fig, for example, I don't think these people actually live with this fiddly fig on their kitchen counter because it's just gonna like be in the way. And it kind of reminds me of Dakota Johnson's Architectural Digest tour when she was in her kitchen and there were these limes and she was like, I love limes and I love to display my limes like this or something like that. And then it came out later that, you know, she doesn't actually even like limes or she's allergic to them or something. And the decorator or the stager for the video put them there as like a prop. And then there's also Troy Sivan who had fresh cut apple tree branches on his dining table. And they had like actual apples on them, which is really cool, but you know, it's not like practical. I think it's good to remember that these homes are staged and they're not necessarily good examples of how people actually live. So the next plant isn't really a plant, it's just, cut branches of trees in vases. I first started seeing this on Instagram, mostly from Japanese accounts, and they seem to use a variety of trees. And I honestly think that this looks pretty good. It's like a super easy way to add a tree-like plant in your home without having to worry about light and giving it the proper care. And it's pretty quick and easy. Personally, I wouldn't do it because I'm afraid of introducing pests or fungal diseases or bacterial infections into my house plants. And then I saw this photo on AD and this vase is so cool. I don't know where they found a vase like this, but like that super tall skinny fluted vase with the tree branch just looks, looks so good. I see people often put tree branches as centerpieces for coffee tables or for dining tables. I'm assuming that this is only for photos or for videos because imagining people actually living with giant vases of branches in areas where people are supposed to sit and converse and stuff like that just seems so impractical because either you're gonna have to move that vase every time you use that area or you're just gonna have to talk through a bunch of branches and vases so yeah i'm assuming that this is mostly only done for social media or for photos so the next plant is the shady lady tree also called the black olive tree it's called a black olive tree but it's not actually an olive you can't eat anything that it produces i also don't think it's even in the same family this is a plant that i've never seen in an actual regular person's home. I've only ever seen them in these really stunning, expensive designer homes or in businesses. They are very expensive and they're really big and they seem tough to take care of because they need a ton of light. However, they do look really good. Like I think that these trees are so, so attractive. They're kind of like giant bonsai. And I think that people like these because they're very tall and the leaves are small and like dainty. So it doesn't detract too much from the space, but it gives a lot of good vertical height. And it also looks like a tree that would be outside. You know, it doesn't look like a house plant. It looks like an outside tree. I couldn't find that much information online about this plant because not many people keep it as an indoor house plant. But what I did see were a lot of people having issues with their shady lady tree dropping all of its leaves. Um, and that doesn't seem very ideal as a houseplant, especially because it's supposed to be like a statement tree and it would be really unfortunate to have like your giant statement tree just be an empty trunk with empty branches. I can't figure out if this is like a good houseplant or just a plant that people are using um, temporarily for shoots. But if you do own this plant, let me know how it's going for you. So next is the Australian bottle tree. This is a really unique plant. When it's grown outdoors in the ground, it takes on a completely different shape than it does when it's grown as a house plant. When grown outside, they develop these huge bases that swell up and that's where the name Australian bottle tree comes from because it looks just like a bottle. So there's this other plant design company in Los Angeles called Houseplant and the owner, Rob, he uses the Australian bottle tree a lot in his displays. They're a hardy plant that take well to being bonsai, so I often see them in shallow dishes that highlight their shape and the form of the trunk. You can also expose some of the roots at the bottom and wrap them around rocks and it also works for a really cool display. Houseplant recently installed an Australian bottle tree display in Kendall Jenner's shop. I don't know what kind of shop she owns, but she has some type of company where she sells things. Um, but yeah, the display looks super cool. So next is the Everfresh tree. 
And this is a tree that I mostly only see in Asian countries like Singapore, uh, Malaysia, and Japan. I looked for one in the US and I can't find any. So yeah, if you know where to get an Everfresh tree, please let me know. Similar to the black olive tree, this doesn't look like an indoor house plant. Um, it looks more like a tree that you would find outside. From what I've seen, this plant grows really well indoors and it grows pretty fast. I love the leaves on this plant. And in Japan, I see the Everfresh tree trunk often bent and wavy. I talked a little bit about that in a previous video. Um, they also do this bending thing in Japan with ficus, like the fiddle leaf fig, and then also like ficus elastica. I think if this plant was more available in the US, it would be really popular, but I just can't seem to find it. So those are all of my plants that I'm gonna share with you guys today. If you guys have any other plants that you've seen, please share them in the comments because I'd like to know, you know, keep up to date. And also, I am gonna go to Japan soon. I'm going, I think in just a couple of days. So yeah, soon we'll have some Japan travel videos out. And I also really wanna visit some plant shops and show you guys some cool plant things over in Japan. Okay, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.